Hi guys, welcome back. I want to talk today a little bit about uh, a concept called cook-off voltage and current law. So we've got two laws actually. There's a voltage law and there's a current law. And um, we need both of them in order to analyze circuits. Now it turns out we're going to start out with cook-off voltage law and current law because they're most directly connected to Maxwell's equations, which is the equations that govern electricity and magnetism in general. Um, Kirchhoff's current law and voltage law are sort of uh, less general, but more useful for analyzing circuits. <clears throat> so and that's fine. Uh, we're going to find out that, in fact, even though they're perfectly general and they always work, they're kind of a pain in the neck. And so we're going to learn other ways to simplify and make our job of analyzing circuits easier. But we got to start somewhere, so that's where we're going to start with that Kirchhoff's voltage law and current law. Um, I want to uh, begin by making an analogy with hiking. So, uh, actually, let's see. Do I still have. Let's see if I can find my original picture. Yeah. So, when you go hiking, um, you might be fortunate enough to have a topological map, a topo map, they call it. It looks something like this. This is actually a mathematical topo map. I generated it with a couple of Gaussian curves, which are uh, quadratic exponentials or whatever. But the point is, one of them is at the is centered at the coordinate 2, comma 3, so 2 in the x direction, 3 in the y direction. The other is at negative 1. Let's see, it's negative 1, negative 4. So it's negative 1 in the x direction, negative 4 in the y direction. You can see this is the center of the big one. That's the center of the small one. These lines are lines of constant height, constant altitude. And when you're hiking, of course, if you wanted to go between these two hills and not climb very much, you'd go right through here. You can see exactly where your path should take you. Um, but if you wanted to get to the top, you could figure out, you know, what would be the easiest way to get there and how much altitude would you gain in going there. You can see right away that this one is not nearly as tall as that one because the maximum topo line is this sort of uh, blue-green, which is going to put you right about here. It turns out that's because the big one is twice as high. It's got double the height of the short one. Now, uh, I want to visualize this, and, and we're talking about hiking, and we're talking about altitudes. Why are we going to do that? Well, it turns out there's a very strong analogy between altitude and voltage. In many ways, voltage behaves like an altitude. And Kirchhoff's voltage law has a nice analogous meaning in the context of altitude. It means as you hike around a trail, if you add up all the altitude changes as you go around, by the time you get back where you started, the sum of the changes in altitude have to add up to zero. And that's simply because you always end up at the same altitude where you started. If you if you stop at the same place where you started, your altitude is going to be the same at the end as it was at the beginning. And that's essentially what Kirchhoff's voltage law says. So here I have a heat map. It's the same picture, kind of sideways. Um, but here's my 3, 2. Here's my negative 1, negative 4. Um, and uh, we're going to pick a, we're going to take a hike. And the hike is going to take us around this path. Our current altitude at this location is 0 0.59. So remember, it, 2 is the maximum of this guy, 1 is the maximum of that guy, and uh, in the middle, uh, the bottom is 0. The blue is 0. The red, the reddest red is 1. So, um, okay. So let's go ahead and, and watch it go. I'm going to go here. And notice that I'm actually going to change perspective so you can actually see the hills. And if we start at 0.59, we're going to go up. <laughs> we'll get up to the, about the maximum of this part of the path. We're not quite to the top. The top is 2, but this is the maximum height on the trail, 1.91. And we're going to go down to the bottom here. 0.09 is the lowest point on the trail. Then on our way back, we're going to climb back up again. We'll get about 0.86. And then we're going to end up stopping back where we started at 0.59. So going up to 1.9, down to 0.09, back up to 0.86, and then back to 0.59. If we take the sum of the differences between all those numbers, it's going to add up to zero. And it's 
have to add up to zero because we ended up at the same altitude. So that's the idea of Kirchhoff's avoidance law. In the context of hiking, you'd say the sum of the altitude changes as we go around the trail have to add up to zero. Um, in Kirchhoff's voltage law, you'd say the sum of the voltage drops across the different elements of the circuit as you go around the circuit have to add up to zero. So we're going to go back to that same circuit we had last time, same exact elements, but this time I, I want to uh, imagine going around a couple of loops in order to write down Kirchhoff's voltage law for each loop and then use those uh, equations that we get in order to solve the circuit. So we're not going to solve the circuit today. We're going to do that next time. But we're going to go around a loop like a trail on a mountainside, and we're going to add up the altitude drops, or in this case, the voltage drops as we go along. And the sum of those voltage drops are going to demand those readings. Now remember, the voltage drop across the resistor is equal to the current flowing through the resistor times the resistance of the resistor. So we're going to use, that's Ohm's law. We're going to use Ohm's law in order to write down these equations. So I'll begin by uh, marking up the voltage change and the current through each resistor. Now I just sort of pick that randomly. Um, you know, we don't know at the beginning which way the voltage is going to drop and which way the current is going to flow. So we can just mark them up any way we like. However, uh, in this case, I'm going to guess that the current's going to flow away from the voltage source toward ground. Ground is at the bottom. Ground is down here. And so I'm going to imagine the current's going to flow this way. And through these resistors, I'm going to imagine it's going to flow that way. We'll find out when we solve the circuit whether that's correct or not. But that's what we might imagine. So I'll go ahead and mark up these other guys. One thing I want you to notice is that the current is always flowing from high potential to low potential. That's just like a river. If you're on a mountainside and you see a river flowing down the mountain, it's always going to flow down the mountain. You never see a river flowing up the mountain. In a, when you've got a resistor like this in a circuit, the current always flows from high potential to low potential. So whichever way you label the potential, that's the way the current's going to flow. It's going to flow from high to low. And, and we just need to make sure we always mark it up that way so that our notion of current and voltage change are all consistent with one another. Okay? So, uh, so let's scoot the circuit to the side and let's write out Kirchhoff's current and voltage law. First, we're going to go around that one loop. And now the way the textbooks do it is they calculate the sum of the voltage drops by looking at the sign of the potential going into the element as you traverse it. So the first voltage drop, they're going to label that as minus 11 volts. Then it's going to be plus V1 plus V2. But remember that delta V1, the change in the voltage across resistor 1, is also going to be 4.3 ohms times I1. And the voltage drop across resistor 2 is going to be 5.6 ohms times I2. So you're going to write the Kirchhoff voltage law out like that. Minus 11 plus 4.3 I1 plus 5.6 I2. Now, when I learned how to do this, I did it the other way around. I actually saw going through that 11 volt power supply, I see that as a plus 11 volt. And then going through the 4.3 ohm resistor, I see the voltage going down. It goes from plus to minus. So it goes down by 4.3 times I1. And then it goes down by 5.6 times I2. So I would write plus 11 minus 4.3 I1 minus 5.6 I2. But notice that it doesn't matter. The equation's the same. If you multiply this equation, from the textbook way, by minus one everywhere, you get exactly the equation I would write down from my, you know, physicist way of looking at the circuit. It's exactly the same thing. So it's okay. Let's do the next loop. The next loop, I'm going to go around this way. So I'm going to start at the 5.6. So I'm going to go minus 5.6 times I2 plus 2 times I3 plus 9.1 times I4. So those are Kirchhoff's voltage. That's Kirchhoff's voltage law applied to those two loops. Okay. Now I want you to notice something. I've got two equations now, but I've got four unknowns because I've got I1, I2, I3, and I4. So that's not enough equations to solve for four unknowns. So I need two more equations. And that's where Kirchhoff's current law comes in. So Kirchhoff's current law says that you can't have more charge entering a junction than leaving the junction. So that means these currents, I3, 
I2 and I1 have a mathematical relationship between them. In particular, the current leaving, so if I look at this junction right here, that guy, and I look at the currents leaving the junction, that's I3 and I2, the current entering the junction is I1. So I would write that I3 plus I2, that's the sum of the currents leaving the junction, minus I1, the current entering the junction, has to equal zero. So I would write it this way. I3 plus I2 minus I1 equals zero. Okay. Now that gives us one more equation, but I still need another equation because I got four unknowns. I only have three equations, so I got to look at this other known on the other side. Let's focus on that one. What currents are leaving that junction? Well, I4 is leaving the junction, but I've got I3 and I've got the 1.8 amps from that, that current source entering. So this one is going to be I4 minus 1.8 minus I3 equals zero. So now I've got four equations and four unknowns, and I can solve the circuit. This method of solving the circuit is Kirchhoff's current law and Volta's law. It always works. It's very general, but it's a pain in the neck because I end up with four equations and four unknowns. Four equations and four unknowns. And that's a lot. So we're going to learn tricks to solve those guys. Next time I'm going to explain a trick that you can use to solve this using the computer. You can also write these down um, as a matrix formula and use matrix algebra to solve it. I can show you that as well. I will show you that as well. Um, but really more powerful even than that are the nodal analysis and mesh analysis, which are things we're going to learn next week, or not this week, but next week. And, uh, and we'll apply those to this exact same circuit. And you'll see that you can write immediately down the solution using only two equations and two unknowns. It turns out this, this circuit really only has two equations and two unknowns. And so that's the way we'll solve it ultimately. But these equations are very easy to understand. They're very general. They always work, but they're more labor than we'll need when we have our, our other equations. So that's all I have for you today. We'll see you guys in class next time.